All right, Beardis, your your first Mac game, and then just uh, obviously you had a really good game, 18 yeah. points. Just kind of talk about the the game today, and then how you played. Uh, I feel like I played like a lot. I played at first off. I played a lot more than I usually, you know, than I usually I thought I would because uh, I had a little hip hip problem going on. So I wasn't sure if I was even gonna play this game. So I came out toughing it up, had some ibuprofen pills, you know, and just sucked it up and played. So it turned out to be a great great performance for us, our team, and we came out with the win. You can just kind of talk about, um, it seems like when you guys are really pushing the ball and in transition, it seems like that's when you're at your best on offense, uh -huh. especially early on in the game. Yeah. Just talk about that as a whole, as a team, just flowing on offense and when you guys push the ball. Uh, we st actually started like started pushing the ball for real against Michigan State because we tried to match their intensity. So yeah, that was a big emphasis for Coach Hawk. Like he made it like for us. So basically, we just started pushing the ball more. So basically, yeah, that's it. Really. And then just talk about your mindset, you know, early on. Um, it seemed like you were really aggressive, obviously. And then you missed a couple shots maybe in the middle there, uh -huh. but then got it right back going again. Just right. talk about that attacking mindset. Uh, my Coach TK, mainly took Coach TK, he tells me to just stay aggressive, stay low, be calm, protect the ball, and take care of the ball. So basically I was just coming, with, coming in the game with an aggressive mindset. If I miss, I miss. I'm just going to take my shots. The shots I take is the shots I can make. So. And then obviously a guy like Mike Flowers um, didn't score the whole first half mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden can just take over a game yep, like that. Exactly. Like, have, yep. have you ever seen a guy, you know, quite like uh, that? Man. That man right there, he's he's different. He's different. Uh, I told him, I told him at halftime, you know what you could do. I told him at halftime, you know what you could do, just do it. And then he came out and jaw dropping moments, you know. That's just Mike. That's it. Obviously, this is your first Mac game, but do you feel any different intensity so far? I mean, I know it's only one game, but oh yeah, the crowd for sure. I can feel, I can like feel the crowd on my shoulders. I can feel like the t intensity of the game. I can feel all of that. It's a lot of pressure, but you know, pressure comes with comes with playing basketball. So is that that's why I, that's why that, I love it. Yeah, is that just something that you like to do, play in front of big crowds? Yeah, you had twelve oh, yeah. against oh, Michigan yeah. State, and then uh, you have eighteen here. Yeah, against I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is this? I don't know. I just like the hype. I like the hype. It gets me going. It gets me, yeah, it gets me going. If you can just kind of talk about you guys uh, defensively, that you held them to 34% shooting. Um, just uh -huh. first and second, it seemed like, you know, the first half, you guys really came out with a lot of intensity. Yeah. Just talk about that effort as well. Uh, we had, like, we usually always, I wouldn't say always, but, like, we have, we like, we have been known to come out flat in games, like, come out, like, start the game off flat. So we started, like, staying on our toes, being ready to take initiative on defense. And defense was a big emphasis. Defense wins games, so that's what we did. How do you take what we did well in this game on the road for the next two? Uh, just match that energy. The same energy we came out with, we got to bring that, take that, put it in our backpack, and take it to the road. All right, Coach, opening statement about tonight's win. Well, it's Mac basketball. You know, there's a typical Mac game, and uh, I, I, I can envision a lot of games looking like this um, over the course of the next 17. You know, and, and uh, I'll tell you the same thing that I told our guys. This was whether we won, whether we lost. It's game one out of 18, you know, and now we've got two more on the road this week. Um, but it certainly feels good to, to start off with a home win and, and uh, the way we had to do it. Uh, like I said, I, I don't. I just I see a lot of games going like this where we're going to have to withstand runs in both directions. And I was proud of our effort, really proud of our effort. Obviously, you had that 13 out run to start the game there. Um, just talk about what you saw from that and what you see from your offense when it seems like you know you're really pushing the ball and getting out in transition. It seems like it's at your best. You're at your best when you do it. Yeah, we are. I, I, I thought Ohio did a much better job in the second half, uh, or really from you know probably about the last 30 minutes of the game. And, um, you know, we got stops, uh, you know, in, the, in, in that opening stretch. We got big stops. And, um, and when we got stops, we got clean rebounds. We got out the run. I, I, was, I, I did something really dumb in the first half I'm upset at myself for, and that is I left a group in too long. And, and I think they got fatigued uh, during that time. When they got fatigued, we settled for jump shots. 
Um, and and uh, that's when Ohio caught back up, you know, and I, I can't have Mike and Brandon specifically out there um, for 10 minutes. You know, I think they were out there for something close to that. Brandon might have even been out there a little bit longer. And and that that's my fault. Uh, that That's something I won't do again. Um, but when we when we go to the bench, we got to keep the tempo up. We got to get uh, we got to get the clean stops. What started to happen was um, when we got some stops, the, their offensive rebounds started to bother us. You know, and and they were missing a lot of shots. And we held them to twenty five percent in the first half. That's a lot of shots coming off. You know, and if you don't if you don't rebound the ball on that. Um, it, it, it's hard to it's hard to run. You know, if we could get the clean rebounds, um, that's the way we want to play. We want to play up tempo. We want to really push it. We are at our best um, when we do that. Um, but we have to get people off the glass uh, in order to do that. And again, some of that was my fault for leaving guys in too long and just being fatigued. And you had two freshmen, obviously, in B. Artis White and, and Titus Wright, really, really playing well in their first MAD games um, today. Just talk about what you, you saw from them and, and their energy and, and effort for you. There. Yeah, four guys in double figures. Uh, you know, two of them were freshmen in Titus and Beardis. Um, you know, and then you throw Michael and and uh, and Brandon in there as well, doing their normal thing. You know, we only had ten turnovers. I, I, I thought we had pretty good pace. Every once in a while, we get stagnant. But but Beardis and Titus both are guys that that work hard. Uh, we weren't sure if Beardis was going to play today. Uh, I mean, Beardis. Um, uh, you know, I liked what I saw out of him at Michigan State. But when we came back uh, in the first practice back, he, he pulled a uh, hip flexor muscle uh, real bad um, and missed the next two days of practice, could barely lift his leg. And then uh, Kevin Lehman, our trainer, did a terrific job spending a lot of time with him, getting him ready to go, a lot of treatment. And um, he came back, looked a lot better yesterday, and and wanted to give it a shot today. He looked like himself, you know. So uh, it was great to see uh, both of those guys play well. And Titus at the free throw line, you know, you got to that's the artist and Titus both ended up with the ball at the uh, at the free throw line a, a, a lot at winning time. And um, that's you know first mat game, you got to put the game away and your freshman at the free throw line, that can be a lonely place. And both of those guys look really comfortable. And then obviously Flowers, um, he didn't score in the first half, but it seemed like he was still playing a really good floor game, rebounding the ball, you know, making assists. Um, how, how do you think he just lets the game come to him? What does that speak of about his maturity before, before he obviously took over scoring? I, I'm so proud of Mike. Uh, I mean, I'm so proud of him. The way his game has evolved uh, through the years, you know, Mike was, you go back to high school and even AAU ball, Mike had to score. You know, and, and um, so he's had that mentality. He's got that assassin's mentality. Then you go, you know, his freshman year here, he's playing behind Thomas Wilder. You know, and, and um, so his minutes were in there, but he's just trying to find his way um, through, a, through his freshman year playing behind one of our all-time greats. You know, then the sophomore year, uh, last year, he has all of his teammates go down. You know, and when you have Brandon Johnson and, and Jason Whitens and Bryce Moore all go down with injuries, all upperclassmen, and now you're playing with a bunch of freshmen and Seth Dugan. You know, a, a, you know, last year's team had a chance to be pretty dang good if, if those three guys don't get hit or hurt with Mike and Seth out there at the same time and Josh Davis. But they did, you know, and so Mike was put in a situation again where he had to score. You know, there just weren't a lot of options out there. And I, I think he wore down as the season went on. Um, he still has that uh, still has that uh, uh, killer mentality this year. Um, you saw that tonight. Uh, I mean, some big shots there late. And um, he still has that. But he also understands the value of sharing the ball, getting it moving side to side. Other, We call it the power of the orange. You know, when you touch the ball. Um, everybody just gets a little juice bump, you, you know, you feel involved in the game, you know, and, and uh, he, he's got a much better understanding of that now. Played solid defense for us. Again, I probably played him a little bit too long in that first half, but we got him some, some time off in the second half, and I, I, was, I was really pleased with this game. There's a, win, there's a huge play. I, I, I got to talk about it real quick. Huge play. We call it a winning play, you know, where uh, Brandon went up and saved the ball you know, late, and the ball came back into Mike, and Mike drilled a three right there to take the lead from one to four, I believe. And, um, you know, I can, coaches get, I've said it a million times, coaches get too much credit, too much blame, too much money. 
um, it, it, that play right there. I could drop whatever play you want, okay, and it's all fine and dandy. It's players making plays that win games, you know, and Brandon made a terrific play right there. Mike made a great shot, you know, and, and then Titus knocking down free throws, going up, getting rebounds. It's just I was really happy with our guys' effort. And, and then the big story of the game from a basketball standpoint um, – was uh, for us was holding them to 34 uh, percent overall from the field. You know we kept our turnovers down, only had 10. Um, it's not great, and they out rebounded us. But again, some of that's going to happen when you play good defense. So uh, there's plenty of room to get better still. And it seemed like this game had some kind of some weird flows. Like to start, it was really quick, and then the second half, the fouls started to build up kind of both ways. How are you guys able to mentally, you know, stay focused and you know stay within the game? It was really, it was a really weird, it, it wasn't poorly officiated at all. Um, it was just a weird, you're right, it had a weird flow to it. In the first half, um, we shot whatever 12 free throws, Ohio didn't shoot any. That's what we had happened to us at Michigan State. You know, and then in the second half, uh, I think at one point in time, Ohio, or we had six or seven fouls, they had one. You know, and and um, and we all of a sudden we I mean we had a foul to give in the first half, uh, you know, with under 30 seconds going second half, we, we put them in the bonus way too early, you know, and so it was it was very stressful on our defense. Um, we we tried not to foul, and they were able to get to the rim some. I thought Ohio. I thought Ohio did a terrific job of recognizing they were in the bonus and driving the ball. Um, they got to the free throw line some uh, as well, but um, you know, overall, um, pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good effort. Coach, how do you take this win and move it towards the next two up that are on the road? Yeah, I mean, it's it, we're in the it's a difficult schedule. You know, Ohio um, right away. That's a good basketball team. You know, they have inside, they have outside. Vanderplas and Preston and Dardis, those are really good players. Like Bunda, um, you know, they've got some guys that can shoot it on the perimeter. Um, you know, they're in like they're long uh, as well. It's a good basketball team. It's going to win. It's going to win. They're sh certainly their fair share of games in the MAC. They're going to be very competitive. So that's a good win for us. Um, now you got to go to Akron and Toledo in the same week, you know, and if you're going to compete, uh, you know, which we hope to do, if you're going to compete for, for the top of the conference, you have to win some road games, you know, and, and we have opportunities here this week. Akron is outstanding. I, I saw about 10 minutes of film on them and I said, all right, that's enough of that. I, I've got Ohio to worry about. I don't want, I'm, I'm watching Akron was making me sick. Um, with how good they played. And then I watched some of the games last night and how good Kent State looked. And, and I have Ball State and Toledo both look good last night. And, you know, in Bowling Green, I think when they get Justin Turner back, I think they're going to be um, uh, good. And so, you know, it's a really good league. But we have a couple of opportunities in front of us this week uh, against the really good Akron team and a, and a really good Toledo team that have some quality wins already under their belt in the non-conference part of the schedule. So road, road toughness. You know, road toughness so far, um, you know, we've, the road has not bothered us. Um, now, who we play um, bothers us some, um, but the road hasn't bothered us. You know, we, we picked up a win at Manhattan. We picked up a win at Milwaukee. Um, we've played well in spurts. You know, in Oklahoma State game, we were tied up with two minutes to go. And, and Ole Miss, we were up early uh, in that game. They ended up going to a zone and blowing us out. But, um, you know, we, we've played well on the road. That the My point is the atmosphere has not bothered us. You know, so I think the guys will be ready to go. It's just it's just going to be the five the five guys that are wearing Western Michigan jerseys and the five guys that are wearing Akron jerseys that are going to decide it. I'm sure they're going to play well. I'm sure we're going to come out and try and play hard. You know, it's just going to be what, what takes place on the court. Thank <laughs> you.